10 cents, 2 cents on child luck and games. And Valve's major changes to Dota 2. This is Screenplay Daily News, three times a week. It's Wednesday the 5th of July, I'm Steph. I'm Nick and here's what we've deemed newsworthy. Chinese internet giant Tencent has implemented a time limit for kids in one of their mobile games. Honor of Kings, or Strike of Kings as it's known in the West, is now China's most popular game as of May. It averages 163 million monthly users, with around a quarter of those being under the age of 19. Starting Tuesday, anyone under 12 will be restricted to one hour of play per day, and users aged 12 to 18 will be restricted to two hours. So, this comes after parents and teachers have been like up in arms about internet addiction, mm. particularly surrounding this game with kids. I get it, yep. but it's a little extreme. China just love telling you what to do with your kids. Yeah, they do. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, how do they know that a child is of a certain age? Well, they've um, they implemented a kind of um, real name registration system, I think, earlier in the year in anticipation uh, of this. So right. in order to play the game, you have to be like, this is who I am. Here, here are all my details. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so what was it? It was one hour for if you're under 12 mm -hmm. and two hours from 12 to 18. Yeah, that's pretty brutal. That's a big jump. I understand one hour under 12, uh, but 12 to 18, you're lumping like a, that's a broad swath of people. And I think it's never the answer to do, to do it this way. I think you really need to be pushing parents to kind of Education, educate top their down. kids about, yeah. you know, responsible play times and things like that. It but, would actually be bottom up, but yeah. Okay, interesting. I wonder if they're going to, uh, I mean, Tencent own pretty much all the video games. Uh, I wonder if they're going to start implementing this across other titles of theirs as well. Yeah. The thing is, uh, I think they've they've done this as a respond to pressure. Yeah. Because for them, they just want to be making as much money as possible with people playing the game as much as possible. They hate right? that they have to so do this. I don't think they'll be like going, let's do it to everything and lose more money. That's it. That's actually a very good point. Uh, and other big companies are changing the way that their game work. Valve are making changes to the way that Dota 2's international competitive season works. <laughs> Valve are doing away with their own major tournaments, which were previously held three times a year, then two times a year, and now no times a year. Instead, they are increasing their support of third-party tournaments and introducing a qualifying point system for the international. So, those eyes tell me you don't quite get it. So, okay, so what's the what was the issue with the majors in the first place? Why don't they want to do them anymore? That's a very good question, Stephanie. Let's break it down very broadly. The initial vision was three majors a year and then the international, which is the giant tournament. Right. These were all Valve run events. The problem with this system is that if you don't win one of the majors or the international as a competitive, like full-time Dota team, sure. financially, it's very hard for you to like make ends meet by competing in all the other third party tournaments. So, but so why would you be competing in the other third party tournaments if the majors was your way into the international? Because because you still need to make a living playing in all sorts of other tournaments. Oh, just for it, like cash. Yeah, yeah, because that's because if you don't win the international, if you win the international, you get like ten million dollars to split between your team. If you bomb out in the first round, you get a few hundred thousand dollars to split, and there's all sorts of cost and blah blah blah. Right. right. So the way that they're changing it now is that instead of holding their own majors, Valve are going to co sponsor other third party tournaments throughout the year. And they haven't said how many, but it sounds like potentially more. And the way that breaks down is a major tournament is a tournament that has a prize pool of $500,000 or more, mm -hmm. and then Valve will put in an extra $500,000. And a minor tournament is a tournament that has a minimum prize pool of $150,000, and Valve will put in an extra $150,000. So okay, other right. things like DreamHack and Star Ladder, these other tournaments that get run throughout the year, Valve are going to sort of co-sponsor these so that just distributes the money a bit more so that you can compete in more tournaments, win more consistent money, uh, and then build towards the Right, okay, so much better for the players than they have more of an opportunity to win money and make it to the top. Totally, and then the, and then the other part of this, which is the big change for the international, is that uh, they're introducing a qualifying point system. So every time you enter one of these like sponsored tournaments, mm -hmm. then you, uh, depending on how you go, you get a certain amount of points, you as a player. And then those points accumulate, uh, uh, you know, across your team. And then the teams with the most points at the end of the season get to go to the international. So that's how you qualify for that now, as opposed to Valve just going, "Oh, you're worthy, and you're worthy." And yeah, you're that worthy. seems heaps more fair. Totally. The the interesting thing about it is that the points are assigned to the players, not to the teams, because like teams change. Oh, okay. So you can have a player that has 
way more points than everyone else on their team. And if they move teams, then suddenly that team can't oh, qualify. Oh, that's internet. gonna be like that's gonna create some political drama for sure. Yeah, I think it's gonna create like transfers, more like sports stuff where yeah. you're actually trading players and stuff yeah, a lot yeah. more. Like yeah, like players get bought by Spain. Yeah, I mean exactly. I mean there's no Spain Spanish Dota team. Well, there are, but Spain doesn't have one. But sure. I just yeah. That, that was your sports reference. That was my sports reference. I re didn't that happen one time with David Beckham? Uh, sure. So I know I've been speaking a lot over the last couple of minutes, but I hope that sort of like made it clear. It's a complicated thing, but I think ultimately it's a good one. Yeah, definitely. Well, in other news, Sniper Elite developer Rebellion is working on a new installment into the Evil Genius franchise. The original Evil Genius was a PC RTS which launched in 2004 and was praised for injecting humour into a generally stoic genre. Thirteen years later, it's finally getting a sequel, but the game is still in the early stages of development, so don't hold your breath. George Takai is boldly going where no George Takai has gone before, game development. The OG Starfleet Ensign is joining Hong Kong-based game company Fifth Journey as a creative director. There he will oversee development of the video game tie-in to the BAFTA-winning animation Kubo and the Two Strings, in which Takai played a role. Very good. Five Nights at Freddy's 6 may be as dead as the possessors of those animatronic hellsuits. While the game has been publicly in development for some time, developer Scott Cawthon has said he no longer wishes to work on the project. It's likely this is just another classic Cawthon publicity stunt though, and we'll see the game hit store pages next week. I hope not. And on other screens, a Max Payne fan film called Max Payne Retribution has been wowing fans and critics alike. The film, uploaded to YouTube at the end of June, has reached over 60,000 views, with many users in the comments section already asking for a sequel. Leave the poor person alone, they just finished making the first film. The internet cannot be sated. <laughs> but no one ever asked for a sequel to the Hollywood film, so props to these guys. <laughs> That's it for today's news. Tomorrow at 4pm AEST we'll be doing a live Twitch stream on twitch.tv forward slash screenplayau or on our website screenplay.7. Yes, and then on Friday on Facebook, join us for our live answer at 3.30pm on our Facebook page. So start asking your questions here in the comments and we'll answer them and more on stream. You can follow Screenplay in all of these places. Details in the description below. I'm Nick. I'm Steph. And we'll see you every weekday for the rest of your lives. Today we're going to leave you with this epic mod of Dark Souls from user Abject. I already like the outfit. Look at that butt. Look at the Marty McFly thing going. Oh yeah! Hello. Was that a saxophone? Oh! Oh! Oh wow. Oh it's that guy! Oh this is amazing! Why does that dog have a sword? Was that in the game Pete? There's seriously a dog wow. with a sword? Stupid. Is he actually fighting them with the saxophone? Uh, with the power of music, I don't think it's a fair fight. I think he's destroying them. Yeah, wow. It seems, it seems like he's making them fight each other. Oh, now he has one of those like fancy- Whoa! Kiss guitars. Oh, Kita! He has all the 80s instruments. <laughs> <gasps> he stabbed him with the saxophone reed! Whoa. You're not supposed to get it that wet. Why does Sombra do no damage? She does amazing damage. Um, people just need to learn to play. Nice. <laughs> I'm gonna pay nice. for that one. Yeah. That's that's gonna be rough later. Well